Bonjour! This video is about the management of the COVID-19. I find it is interesting and probably useful to have a broader view of what's happening now. And I have been looking at different sources of information, not considering only the medical side of the or the mental health side of things but uh, also the sociological side of things, psychosociological side as well, which I believe is important because it gives us a better broad understanding instead of being carried out by the mass. And yes, the mass of information we have at the moment, 80, about 80% 80 of the information we read or see, view, listen to is about the COVID-19 and this is just um, um, too much for our brains to deal with. So we need, we need to create some distance, we need to have a different analysis of what's happening so we can manage it better. Right, so I will go through different angle of the situation and then I will um, consider specific uh, population like um, those who suffer from mental health issue what are they going through at the moment the carers which are the people working in hospitals and uh, the parents and the therapists I will be mentioning as well the children and the teenagers and something which I find particularly important is the notion of death Sorry, I changed side. <laughs> so notion of death, yes, which is important in life in general, both symbolic and physical death. Okay, so yes, I do find this is very important in life in general. And um, I actually discovered that more uh, when I was living as an expat. I know I'm still living as, a, as an expat, but in different circumstances. And, um, and working with expatriate people because I believe there is a succession of grieving process, especially when we are moving. Anyway, so let's begin with uh, what, what is it we're talking about? Uh, what is a virus? So a virus is a living entity which is, um, which is exten exchanging DNA material with the cell they are occupying in a way and they are mutating and they are adapting and they are very uh, contagious and all those elements, the elements of contagion, the element of mutation and their size which is we can't see them. All those three elements participate to the rise of anxiety because uh, we cannot really control that. And control is really at the center of what is happening now when we, we are losing a, a control of some parts of our life. And this is one of the causes for some distress. Some of us or all of us are feeling at times, right? Viruses, we have a quite a complex and interesting relationship with viruses because they are both threatening, threatening sorry, us at times because they can harm our health. Um, but at the same time, um, if I understand the information I've been looking at, um, they have been very useful for our species because they, for example, they give us the possibility to have a better fetus maternal you know the placenta uh, the rear for the exchange of um, the exchanges that exist with this barrier between um, mother and fetus viruses but long time ago viruses are also being used more and more by country as uh, gene therapy when there is uh, resistance to antibiotics. So, you know, viruses is something that um, can harm us and viruses can help our own physical health. So it's a kind of a dual love-hate relationship. Um, that... Um, 
yes yeah, sorry i'm just checking with my written article if there is anything that i'm missing um, yeah uh, as well that virus we, we are all experimenting at the moment the covid19 uh, because of the contagious and because of the scale of it which is something we've never known before it's it's a pandemic it's it's worldwide uh, our own species our own um, the other humans are um, can be considered as a danger for some of us because there is the fear of contaminating others and there is the fear of catching from others so there is that within our own species there is that uh, insidious uh, doubt that is in our relationship at the moment it's it's a first one we have to manage it and there is more and more the rise of people expressing that when we will be out of the lockdown uh, some people and especially those suffering from um, mental health issue are expressing the fact that going back to normal relationship physical closeness might not be that easy to uh, go back to and i do believe it won't be only for people suffering from mental health issue because all of us we have raised well i mean our level of worries and sometimes anxiety has risen do you say rising in english anyway you know what i mean okay uh, this is a fact so it depends on the day, it depends on, on we're going to see that it also very much depends on the conditions we can live in, but it is a fact. Right, um, yes, I did write that the COVID-19 is actually offering ourselves and our societies a kind of a mirror to our dysfunctioning and our limitations. So we have seen how much the health system has been struggling um, a lot at the beginning and less and less because the cases were going down which is the whole um, idea of the confinement is just to protect not to have too many people in the hospitals at the same time um, the international labor organization the ILO has assessed the situation of a profound inequality with that situation the COVID-19 has been spread out from people who have enough means to travel whether for work or for leisure and it is affecting the poorest or the less advantaged or classes social classes of our society and um, for example the people who need to work and who face the dilemma or of either i lose my job or i face more risk of catching the virus because I have to go on with my work um, this is for specific categories of uh, people not for everybody so the socially disadvantaged we could say uh, groups have greater social contact in in public sphere so have more risks of catching the virus and at uh, for example, the migrants, the um, refugees, the homeless, the undeclared, undeclared workers uh, are particularly affected. Women are as well particularly affected because they are overrepresented in the health sector. Um, another way of, so that that is for work thing, as I was saying as well, something which is real is the fact that depending if you have a home an accommodation or not if you have enough space in your accommodation if you have an access to the internet then you can more or less uh, keep working uh, manage your mood because look i have i have my office i can i'm by myself here i have an access to the internet and all of that obviously will help me manage my worries my anxiety and people who are with less um, good condition of working for working and just for living 
will have much, much higher distress and so difficulty to manage their own mood. Hence, you've, you've heard probably of the rise in the violence in households um, towards the more vulnerable people, and it's usually children and women. So that, that is a reality, and it's because the um, public services, health services, uh, social services are less free to go and meet people in their home. And it is also because people are in lockdown and it's not always easy to live all together, especially when you don't have a proper um, uh, space for living. So yes, another thing was, is um, the collection of data. We've seen that in some uh, Asian countries, part of the management was to collect um, personal data, sensitive personal data. This is something that we're not used to in Europe. Uh, our governments, um, several governments in Europe, are thinking about doing this. And you have the CNIL, Commission Nationale des Libertés um, de l'Informatique et des Libertés in France, and the uh, ICO, the Information Commissioner Office in the UK, have both uh, warned about the, the use, uh, the utilization of personal data by government. And yeah, because, you know, personal data and health data by the government, this is down to privacy and this is changing at the moment. So hmm, as citizen, um, this is something maybe to keep in mind. Both of them have said that um, it is exceptional time and that can help for the unlock of the societies, but warn about the security there is linked to that. It is important to remember, especially when we look at the news that say, yes, this medication is coming and it's, the, it's very useful and two days after, well, actually, no, it's not working and it might be dangerous and so on and so on and so on and vaccination and all those things. We have to keep in mind that scientists are learning about the COVID. They are learning, um, well, I think the genome sequences are pretty well known, but now they really don't know everything far from that, from the way it is spreading, who, how, why, and so on. So when you read news, it's very important to keep distance because if the scientists don't know much about it, then the politician in charge um, will make their own decision depending on the scientists and their, you know, their uh, political um, uh, beliefs. And we've seen that many, and, and cultural beliefs, that's very important as well. We've seen that different countries have had different approaches and to be honest with you, who knows who's right? Because if scientists still don't know much about the virus, you know, um, the, the politicians do, I, I, let's suppose, yes, they do whatever they can with the information they have, plus their own uh, beliefs of a society and the economy. The economy has a huge part in that. Uh, yes, yeah, so it is important to remember that we are in, in the process of understanding how this virus is affecting us. We don't know much. So let's keep our distance and our um, cold mind, I would say, not jump into conclusions. Um, that's for the medical side of things. For the understanding of the functioning of the societies, we have no model we don't have any research that tells us what's happening in our society as a global thing because we are dealing with a pandemic and the research we have on this pandemic, um, their sample is smaller and the other research we have are about epidemics, not pandemics. And because of the size sample, which is totally different, then the mechanics of understanding do change completely. So the research we have can 
help us approach an understanding but cannot give us a complete and clear understanding of what's what we're going through for example we have um uh, where did I put that? We have um, yes, a research for, from China from the this year, the sixth of uh, March. Yes, yeah, sixth of uh, March. It was on fifty-two thousand people, and among those, thirty-five of them uh, testify of a moderate psychological stress uh, of being. Uh, confined and five percent of them said they needed psychiatric care um, after three weeks of isolation um, and then we have a uh, research from the lancet uh, from february end of february 2020 that says that the length of the isolation itself um, is predictive of uh, post-traumatic um, ptsd uh, post-traumatic uh, syndromes as well as avoidance and as well as anger uh, but again we have to be aware that the sample is not at all what we are going through because we are going through a pandemic the whole world the whole world or nearly i think there are there is um there are a few islands in the world which are covid free and want to stay in isolation <laughs> don't blame them um, yes, to come back to the maybe the political side of things, the, the group of people we are more linked to as citizens at the moment are the scientists, the politicians, and I would say the owners of the, the medias, the mass medias. Uh, the first one because they are those giving us information, the second one because they are those making decisions for us. And the third one, because they are those who give us information. Uh, so we are kind of dependent in a way, partly, de partly only dependent on them for our daily life and for, for our understanding of things. Um, but it, it is interesting to and very important to realize that if we as a matter of fact, have lost some uh, control over our life, we can keep, and when I say control, for keeping some level of control, it's more a level of consciousness um, of what we can decide on our life, our inner uh, world, which is our emotions and feelings, and what can we keep organizing in our life here and now, um, realistically when we can't move outside of our home as as much as we could and that requires um, to organize to put into action to yes to organize a new routine of our life it's the the time routine the time structure of our, our life is very important because we are still at home and our days are not rhythmed by having to go outside for work, having to go outside for shopping, having to go outside for blah, 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 blah. We're just at home, okay? So it is important to structure the day. That's a really good tip, actually. Very, maybe the most important, structuring your days to keep that notion of consciousness and control over your emotions and life uh, yes uh, Walter Scheidel who is a contemporary uh, Australian historian said that um, the biggest reassessment in life in general he's done a, a kind of a research book um, of what he called the great leveler which from the stone age i think yes to the 21st century big big work and he says that uh, the, the biggest reassessment resulted from the most severe societal shocks and um, pandemics with uh, risk of death is one of them so it's interesting to see that and i'm going to talk about that a bit more later on when we go through an easy events, an easy emotions, an easy um, 
yes, facts. Um, we go through different steps of grieving. So I'm going to again go through that in a moment. And at the very end of it, there is a possibility to learn. There is a possibility to grow. There is a possibility to um, expand from it. And that is in therapy what we call the traumatic growth. That is from the positive psychology. And, and that's a fact. But it, it can only come after several steps uh, of grieving that we are going through. Okay. Okay. Um, um, yes, uh, what's happening again in us as a as with a psychosocial um, uh, door to understanding this situation is that best thing is instead of getting all the information nonstop, having alerts on your phone, bleep, stop. Well. Do whatever you want, but if you stop them, you will feel much better. Uh, in in terms of being informed, it's you will regain consciousness and and uh, more control. If you choose once or twice a day, you really you you don't need more because then you won't have any more new information. So once, maybe twice a day. You choose when you want to be informed. You choose your media. If you want it to be the television, the newspapers, the radio, and which one. So choose that and choose the information you are looking for. Because if you just scroll down and read every information, which actually I'm doing most of the time, it's not the best because then you're just having all the information being thrown at you and you're losing the control of checking what it is you want to choose. Okay, or go actually, you can scroll down the, the, the headlines, but then choose the one you want to read and don't read them all. Honestly, that would be too much to deal with. And then you will fill in your mental space with, with all those negative information because that is basically what they're selling because they want to sell and they are surfing on the waves of uh, worries and anxiety and it works. Um, Yes, so choose what is the information what is the information you want to really get and uh, stop the rolling snowball of constant information that is not good at all for mental health. Um, yes, that as well. Yes, it was very interesting being a French national to see the information and, and having friends and family in different countries. It was very interesting to see the differences, cultural, subcultural differences, and as well the commonalities of um, us all humans. When I was checking what's hap what was happening in, in Italy or in Spain or in France and now in the UK, because um, the core of feelings, the core of the different steps we're going through are exactly the same. Uh, when the cultural and subcultural frames um, vary. So when, when I say cultural, subcultural, it's really down to the national culture and then the political culture. Um, and, and then it can be, when I say subculture, it can be the area where, where people are living and it can be the belief system people have created. Um, so the different steps I was talking about that we all go, go through because we all go through the same uh, steps of uh, to manage those emotions. Those steps sometimes are they, they don't they may not have the same lens for each of us, uh, but they do exist. Okay, so. First, there is the denial, kind of, nah, that's not for me. You know, it's happening in China. That's, that was the fact at the beginning. Nah, this is happening in China. That's not about me. I'm safe. I'm fine. That's the denial. Because basically, we don't want to see it because it's, the threat seems too, too big to handle. Or we just do not have the information. So there is that denial. Um, yes, on the, when I was saying that we have commonalities just as human beings, it, it is interesting to read Heinrich Heine. He's a German writer and poet of the, of the 18th century. 
and he was describing the cholera epidemic in Paris and he was writing Parisians were giggling with much joviality on the boulevards. Yeah, that's the denial phase. Um, then there is a wave of fear and anger um, because the threat is not controlled. So we, we don't know what's going to happen. And then you can have erratic behaviors. We've seen that with the toilet paper. We've seen that with the food. That is an answer to the fear. Um, then there is an outburst of search for causes because we, again, as um, mammals, um, uh, sapiens, sapiens, we need to have we need to make sense of what is happening to us. So we are looking for causes. And um, going back to the cholera epidemics in the um, uh, early, like earlier, the causes were uh, given to the God and the woman and the animals, all the things we were not really understanding and we were fearing that was then very much, very much a male society. And now we have seen on our 21st centuries, century, we have seen an, as well many different explanations. Some are scientific, some are not scientific. But depending on the belief, there is a development of a research of the causes. So we, so we know what we're talking about. We're not in the unknown anymore. That factor of unknown is one which is very uneasy for us humans to deal with. We don't know the unknown. The unknown is creating fear and we don't like fear. So either we avoid or we create or find and look for, that's more that, like that, we look for explanation and causes. And then comes the yeah negotiation. Okay, kind of at the moment. Okay, lockdown, right? But hey, three weeks, not more. Okay, and then we're going to be fine. There is sadness. Uh, sadness is what I call an empowered uh, acceptance. Interestingly, in the Chinese traditional medicine, the the sadness is uh, linked with the lungs. So sadness is an overall um, emotion at the moment, I would say. Well, I know anyway that I have, I am feeling sadness from time to time. Um, and then there is acceptance. So not all people will go to that phase of acceptance. Um, acceptance leads to reassessing our behavior and cognition. We will change our routine and this is where power lies. This is where consciousness lies. This is where the control is back because it is when we have been able to adapt and this is where and when we have been able to create a new reality which is then now uh, congruent with what we're going through. And after the acceptance, creation, adaptability, there is what I was talking about earlier, the growth, the post-traumatic growth. This is when we understand what we've gone through, this is when we can accept and this is when we can create something new. That's the post-traumatic growth. A uh, very interesting concept from the positive psychology. Um, yes, our psyche. Bessel van der, Kolk, van der Kolk, who is um, a specialist of traumas, very well known and recognized in, in his field, is telling us that we all are in a pre-traumatic state. He's saying that uh, trauma is when we have lost the control of something which is happening to us. And he's telling us as well that trauma is when we have no more sense of time. It's a kind of a timeless reality because we are hooked in the past with something that happened to us. And that hook in the past is defining our emotions of here and now. This is trauma and this is what is happening to us now. 
um, does he say something else? Yes, he say is he's saying as well that in trauma there is no predictability, and again this is what we are going through at the moment. And what he advises us to do, because we have that external unpredictability, it will help us to build and create an internal um, predictability, which means we it will help us a lot if we are dealing with our inner emotion okay um, so he's saying structure your daily time activities decide decide when you begin an activity and when you stop the activity so it has to be i would say it has to be both firm and flexible because it has to be um, realistic and sometimes uh, you need to change things. It needs to be um, firm and fluid at the same time. I like those two terms together because this is possible and this is important. But structure your day. You need to know when you're going to do this and this and that. And add into your day's schedule fun, laughter, move your body because, you know, emotions need motion. Do yoga, listen to music, um, Look at films that makes you laugh, connect with your friends, connect with your family, all this. We are social animals. We need social connections. And if we, when we are lucky enough to have the internet, we can access to that. And it is very important. Um, yes, we are in a marathon there. We are not in a sprint. It's going to be, um, I don't know how long. We don't know how long, but you know. It's not going to end tomorrow. So it's very important to get our mental mandari, uh, boundaries and choices as clear as possible so we get that control and consciousness back. Um, so who are the most affected at the moment? Yes, I was... Yes, uh, the increase of domestic violence. I have talked about that already. It could be a good idea to put on your front door some um, some um, numbers because wherever you are, and I'm sure I know it does exist in France, it does exist in Europe, it does exist in the UK. I'm sure it does exist in many other countries. There are hotlines, there are helplines. So, it could be an idea to actually put that on your windows, on your front door, because we you never know who might need that. And that could be a hand offered for someone who might be suffering. This is a reality. Let's not ignore that. Okay. Uh, the most affected, affected among us. So yes, by the book, those who are the most affected are those suffering from uh, mental health issues, chronic diseases, um, uh, those who are addicted um yeah i i would say that's probably them first hand having said that i have a few people i'm working with who are telling me uh, people who suffer from severe anxiety or serious depression they are telling me telling me that anyway they are in social isolation all the time because they work differently so in a way it's reassuring because everybody is in a social isolation at the moment so they for once are like everybody and this is reassuring they also say that because of uh, self-isolation they have less contacts with other people and that is much more easy for them to manage so they kind of are resting nicely in a way at the moment so interesting isn't it um, for all the others I have mentioned, it's uneasy. Know that for those who have chronic illnesses or addiction, da, 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 um, you can still be in touch with the um, health services or social services who are looking after you over the phone or, or via video. The, 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 the contact still exists, so don't think you're by yourself. I know uh, by professional experience that some people and being by themselves, uh, but normally most people should not end being by themselves. You should be able to connect with uh, helplines 
and and the previous person who were working with you hopefully most of the time i'm i very much know it's not possible all the time i do but know as well that you have many therapists who get organized and work for free or work for less uh, rich embassies if you are a foreigner your embassy your consulate they have lists of therapists okay um yes people uh, yes that i have said um sorry i just don't want to lose and forget anything the carers the carers so those working in hospitals the parents the therapists uh gold, golden rule for a carer look after yourself first it's really important whether you work in a hospital whether you are a parent whether you are a therapist looking after yourself does not come with the role you are having because you are a carer no it it, it has to be a chosen behavior it has to be your choice really if you do not manage your own emotion you will just add to the people you are caring for another layer of unhelpful emotions and feelings and that's not your job your job is to clear the way so you are not adding up more it's it's really important um, compassion fatigue is real compassion fatigue is when you have been looking after others and you have dried up your inner resources professional resources um, so you cannot be available at the same level and you are kind of yeah dry and it's real they are real symptoms and they are the symptoms like uh, the ones when you're suffering from um, depression or anxiety or different mental illnesses you have more difficulty to sleep you have mood swings and healthy un unhelpful emotions difficulty to concentrate uh, muscle pain um, kind of a foggy brain um, yeah different you can go up to the panic attack it, it does exist so you have to look after yourself in the case of health workers they it, it, it begins to be better now in europe it's going to be better in the uk it's going to be better in the usa it's going to be better everywhere on the planet health well worker though have to deal plus their own situation they have to deal with the fear of bringing the virus back to their family they have to deal with the fact that those people who are ill in the hospitals are separated from their family they have to deal with the family separated from their loved ones being ill at the hospital they have to deal with much more situations they have had at a point to deal with deciding which people will die which people will survive because they didn't have enough uh, machines to support people so they are just people like you and me and it's not always easy to deal with parents have to manage their own work or no work when sometimes they are in for loaf and they have lost potentially their work they are supposed to be teachers and they are supposed to look after the mental health and the activities and and the joy of their children depending on the age of the child um, it's not always possible every day let's be honest about that and that's okay that's fine that's important to acknowledge um, so it's um, seek help if you need to don't stay alone that's the main thing for carers if it becomes uneasy for you don't stay by yourself uh, seek support it's very important for yourself it's very important for the person you're caring for child a child mental health will depend depending on their age but when the child is young even for a teenager uh, their own mental health will depend on the mental health and their atmosphere in the home so as carer look for that first and and then you will have done three quarters of the job for your child to be okay 
for adolescents um, adolescents are like hermit crab they have that's adolescents they have to move from a little shell to a bigger shell and sometimes there is one available sometimes there is none available and that in between journey is when they are quite vulnerable they, they are not a child anymore they are not an adult anymore so they, there is a vulnerability there plus add to the fact that their uh, frontal cortex is not mature yet and the, this part of the brain is the one we're using to think things through to make plan to adapt to critics to analyze to create distance with things and it's not there yet with teenagers so obviously it's not on off it's a process um, and or each child will begin and end this process at a different age know that teenage time in psychology is defined as up to 25 years old at the moment interesting fact <laughs> Um, so because those teenagers don't have the full access to that part of the brain that helps us uh, analyze and critiques basically the engine engine of uh, their behavior are their emotions so that's why they act on things and the actions is led by their emotions so it's very important to remember that when we are dealing with teenagers um therapists yes equally they need to work we need um, i'm a therapist we need to work on our emotions it's very important because otherwise um again we will add a layer onto our the persons we're working with uh, psyche uh, personally i have five to ten minutes every single time i'm working with someone prior to the work and at the end of the work i'm assessing plus the work the analysis of the session i have um i put on paper the emotions i've had when it happened and so on it's really important to screen our emotions at the moment um, not necessarily actually um, understanding them but at, at minimum is to be aware of them okay and the big one uh, big one i wanted to share with you is the notion of death the symbolic and the physical death we are dealing with um, we are all grieving we all are grieving at the moment and we are in different phases of the grieving thing at an individual level and at a world level we are grieving and grieving according to David Kessler um, who is an um, he's a kid, an economist who is understanding economy through cognitive uh, and behavioral approach if I remember properly and he yes he reminds us that uh, what is centered to grieving um, or I should say that grief is centered to the notion of death and I would say notion of death I would say more the notion of loss because for me it is both symbolic of, of course symbolic and physical so grieving is about dealing with separation, with loss. And with the COVID-19, we have to say goodbye to the life we had before. That's more symbolic. The routine we knew before to create a new one. And sometimes we have done it, but we have not done it completely when we are still self-isolating. So it's, again, it's a process. And the loss and the death is about interrupting a relationship that we had before with um, an organization, a psyche organization and people we had as well because some of us we have to uh, deal with the loss of a loved one who may have died that might have happened, that may happen so it's, it's a, really at different levels um, so we need to understand and regain consciousness so we can adjust and manage what we can realistically manage in our life at the moment. Um, interestingly, messages relating to death and religion had increased in China uh, straight after the 21st of January. So very, very, very soon in the beginning of the pandemic. 
may I say that yes I do say that if there is one sig- single thing we know um, just after we are born we don't know it when but when we, we we are born but there is one certain thing when we arrive on this earth is that we're going to leave this earth one day so the the the, the fact of dying is maybe the only certainty we have on this earth so it's very I find it's the utmost importance to deal with it and to face it. Uh, we have a tendency in our societies at the moment to totally deny death. We are all supposed to be young and healthy and beautiful and rich and and doing well and being happy all the time. Um, that's not reality. That's not how it happens. But this is what society is giving us the message to how we should be and behaving and thinking and and achieve. Um, We have put our elderly in care nursing homes. Uh, We don't want to deal with them anymore. I believe this is part of it as well. This is part of the denial of the death and the, the change of the body, the change of the psyche, the change of our position in society. And we do not recognize elderly because we do not want to face death. So I believe there is a lot of ritual to bring back to our life, especially at the moment, but in general, uh, rebuilding, constructing, creating a different relationship with loss and with, with death, with the death. Um, where did I put that? Yes, building a realistic and original link between the dead and the alive and the loss, the loss, sorry, and um, the non yet loss, I would say. And this can be important to bring peace, to bring us the authorization of being happy fully with no guilt. And this does not mean denying the pain, denying the loss. It's about creating a different relationship with it, a different relationship with those we've lost, a different relationship with our losses all along the way of life. This is what I call befriending loss and death. And I really believe this is possible. There is a work that I am doing at the moment which is centered on that we cannot avoid loss in our life. Um, life is about dealing with loss. And because we tend to not want to see it and acknowledge it in our society, then of course it takes even another dimension and it's even more difficult to deal with it. So this approach I'm developing has nothing to do with religion. And at the same time, if people I'm working with have a religious belief, that's perfect, okay? It, it just does not depend on it. That's all I wanted to share with you. That's a lot. I'm sorry I've been talking very fast, but there was a lot of information. I wanted to add some tips and tools to manage um, the, COVID, the, well, the anxiety level, the worry level, the, maybe the depression level. Um, that will take even more time, so I'm not going to do that, uh, but I will... Uh, put them down in writing underneath the video okay Uh, if you have any question about my work around death if you have any question about uh, what I've been sharing um, today please do not hesitate and contact me Uh, you can send me a message my uh, email address is contact at hypnosisbeyondborders.com it's just one word, no capital letters, all in one go. Contact at hypnosisbeyondborders.com. Okay? Be well, stay safe, stay safe, dyslexia, stay safe. Au revoir.